while i was still studying at iit madras and then at ahmedabad i was very clear that i want to become an entrepreneur and i spent a lot of my uh, free time reading about like steve jobs and richard branson and i was very inspired because i really thought that if you really want to change the world uh, you know nothing like building your own company and uh, you know solving a larger problem um of course i was very scared at that time uh, you know whether i should uh, when i was graduating from iit madras you you know you have like a i had an investment banking job offer and i thought a lot about that decision and probably i was uh, you know i decided very early on that i don't want to have any regrets in my life um, and i really thought that uh, you know going after my dream is the only way uh, to ensure that i don't have regrets um if i really had honestly uh, you know been able to see my journey and how hard it's going to be especially in the first like 10 years maybe i never would have had the guts to do that engineer and you know somebody who's not a very very uh, uh, ardent beauty user growing up um, and my parents are both like scientists so you know they my parents you know we never had too many products at home as well um, it wasn't beauty what was in the area of passion that i started with but i always knew that i wanted to create something where women are the consumer because i just felt that uh, you know the world was changing fast but for women it was changing even faster like Like just the fact that women were beginning to uh, go to work, they were beginning to um, you know uh, study, um, and the the fact that they had access to their own income, they finally had access to internet. Uh, you know, when we started sugar, less than ten percent of the online shoppers were women. Today, the number is forty three percent. So what I was very clear about is that this whole of uh, you know women becoming more confident and more independent in their decision making is going to change many industries that revolve around them and i really wanted to be a part of that because i personally as a consumer for many years even back in 2007 8 um, i had my first business idea was actually to launch a women's lingerie brand because i'd seen like the kind of uh, lingerie brands on uh, you know internationally available and what we had in india in terms of the awareness education uh, you know uh, like approach using technology uh for sizing etc wasn't happening so i was very clear that the opportunity and with every year this mission of ours to you know be like young indian women's favorite beauty brand it gets more and more solidified because at the end of the day i mean if you look at it now like 65% of women are under the age of 35 so imagine for young if you are you know looking at a like a young woman as your core customer how much in the next 10 20 years she will evolve and how much her influence from uh, you know factors that weren't there earlier uh, but are there now will change and how much she's going to begin to start spending and just owning herself rather than uh, you know being uh, following some old trends that her mom followed I think uh, one of the things that worked very well for us is having very clear demarcation of decision making. Uh, because uh, I mean, if you there are any two smart people, forget uh, couples, even two co-founders, um, if you know they will always be opinionated and they will. always have like a strong view on something and that even i mean you will spend a lot of time in getting on the same page unless you have clarity on who takes the final call on what and you know this was one good thing that we did on day one that we you know took the uh, we very clearly demarcated who's call on what and we don't interfere with each other's work at all and that keeps us sane uh, the big mistake we did was that you know we couldn't figure out a way to like separate personal and professional it's easier said than done i mean for us you know on the banners like business is very personal and um, um, and of course so is your marriage so uh, there is always like a, if there is a um, you know and it still happens that if there is a uh, disagreement at work it carries home and vice versa i think uh, it's something that we honestly uh, struggled with and you know couples who go into this should be wary of this um, for us i think the own, the solution actually came not by itself i mean though we tried a lot to do it you know to be mentally stronger to keep these separate but it didn't happen uh, luckily when we had two kids um, it just made it easier because uh, you know you just go home and then you get absorbed so as from becoming a couple you become more parents and you know you, there is i mean they just lighten up the whole air. I see firstly because 
because I've been around for a while, I see a big improvement in the last 10 years. The improvement is in a simple thing that, you know, none of the stereotypes or biases are voiced anymore. Uh, I haven't, you know, mostly, I mean, you know, I, I've rarely come across any situations where uh, questions and I have experienced these questions around, uh, you know, we don't invest in women because, you know, they, you're going to end up having a child and then you prioritize the child and not for the business. We don't invest in women because they're not ambitious enough uh, and various other reasons uh, I've, you know, heard myself. In the last few years, I haven't heard of women's capabilities being questioned openly and I'm very grateful that a lot of uh, uh, you know the education and sensitizing that has happened because at the end of the day you see 99% of the decision makers in venture capital firms are, firms are still men so the sensitizing that has happened in terms of having women focused cohorts and you know conversations around women entrepreneurs and uh, you know that has led to awareness at least so you know people think twice before uh, voicing any biases now, whether there is a bias or not, I feel that, you know, that will only come through with the numbers. Now, the numbers are very skewed still, like you still have less than 2-3% of, uh, you know, the companies that are funded run by women. So, if until the numbers, and which will probably take another decade, start showing this as at least a healthy 20-30%, I would say that probably the bias is still there, it's just uh, not getting voiced anymore. that grow up seeing I, I you know based on the men I've met you know men who had like women who were working moms generally have more respect for the careers of their wives for instance and I just feel that a lot of it is um, you know more than what you teach them is what you show them and uh, I, I you know I think even more than me my husband's a feminist in terms of uh, just being very supportive of my career and never putting uh, you know I, I feel like you know, some of the things, some of the times, like the best of women in office, um, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they relocate because of the fact that just because they earn less than their husband, it is considered their career is secondary to them. Uh, I feel that those are very fundamental shifts, just because you earn less, your career is not secondary, right? So, but just seeing this behavior where there is equality in contributing at home, there is equality in, and, and that, by the way, is one of the biggest things holding women back, you know, they, in India, on average, women do six times more unpaid chores, domestic chores than uh, their better halves. And at the end of the day, you have a finite set of, you know, bandwidth, mental resource, physical resource, right? So if you're putting six times more in home housework, then you will have limited time for your career. Then somebody tells you, you are not putting in the hours at work. I mean, it's not fair, right? So I, I feel that just, you know, just seeing somebody put in, um, my husband put in as many hours at whom um, and my husband treating my career with as much respect as he treats his um, is the biggest lesson for them to treat women at least as equals and I do feel that you know sometimes it seems like there's a lot of conversation about empowering and men get ignored uh, but really you know women are coming from minus one to zero and I, I really doubt that any you know once that like shift happens and we are closer to zero and you know we are asked fewer questions about proving our capabilities um, this you know we, there will be a need for uh, these things but till then you just have to because you know it is not really as much of a level playing field as it seems there is still a lot of um, stuff that we are dealing with to get to where we are and um, you know thanks to women like Falguni and you know role models who are sort of um, making us believe that we can also do it uh, but we'll keep needing a lot more of that for I think another two decades. Okay, uh, the MAC uh, setting spray, right? Oh, shoe dog by Phil Knight. Rush um, and also uh, Forrest Gump. Morning run. I would raise capital after achieving product market fit. L I O. KG Agrotech, Jugadu Kamlesh, who came from a village and uh, Piyush ended up funding. Uh, we were all very emotional and, you know, even after the episode, I'm very proud of Piyush. Don't make me choose between my kids. <laughs>